Kim McGovey here with boxing, bands, and uh, I feel I've got deja vu here in the exact same place, exact same ring, same canvas, and same man. Same man, same <laughs> boxing shorts. Yeah. Super Dara Foley. Super Dara Foley. So, Dara, first of all, how's life been uh, back in Ireland again? Good, good. It's been good this time. It's crazy what a difference 10 weeks can make. Last time I came back, it was freezing cold. Now the sun's splitting the stones every day. But it's good to get good to be back again. Get the um, just you know it fills me with. I, I come back and I just feel everything. I feel the love. I feel the. I just I feel it. As Usyk says, I feel. <laughs> I feel it, man. I feel it. I'm gonna bring all that that good positive energy into the ring with me on Saturday night. This is uh, something obviously you must feel that you really deserve because obviously you had the win against Robert David Jr. and um, like you've given a good amount of time against a very good lad um, but you must feel like it's really good timing because Jack Carroll to a lot of people would be seen as like the, the unofficial undisputed champion but he's been out for 18 months so you're catching him after 18 months and uh, you're on the form of your life like mm. do you know what I mean so you must feel like this once again the timing is perfect for you like Timing is everything in life, man. And, yeah, like you said, he's been out eight damn months. I don't know if I can look into that too much because he had a long layoff before fighting Josh Taylor the first time and it was arguably a career-best performance. But I'm not focused on what he's bringing. I've had back-to-back -back fights. It'll be 11 weeks in between it. I'm ready, man. I'm, I'm coming in hot. That's when I'm at my best, when I'm fighting regularly, when I, when I haven't time to be out of the gym and um, getting fat and men mucking about and late nights, nah. Had one week in Bali with the family, straight back in the train. Perfect, I'm ready man, I'm coming in hot. At the same time you must like as well, even though you're in Australia, you must like the fact that you're coming, like you came over against Robbie David Jr. as the opponent and loads of people weren't like on that side of the pond, weren't giving you a chance and uh, you're kind of able to go away and just walk away and not have the pressure of... Like, there's a lot of pressure on Jack Harrell after his win, supposed win against Josh Taylor. People are just expecting him to win. So you must enjoy that. You're in the form of your life, but there's not a lot of pressure on you. I love it, man. I'm, I'm just in Australia, down on the million miles away, just doing my thing. People are getting onto me, oh, can you do an online Zoom? And I was, nah, I'm just doing my thing. When I touch down in Manchester tomorrow, I'll do whatever media you want. Then you'll see me. When I'm in the shadows training, that's what I'm doing, training. Whereas, and I can do that. I can just be left alone to do my thing over there, you know. In in um, England, boxing is a lot more popular, so it's, it's more of a vacuum, you know. People are always asking you for this, that, the other. I just train, man. I just do my thing in the shadows. No one knows what I'm doing against anyone. I, I know what he's doing because these gyms talk. Um, the the walls have voices in, in the UK, you know? But um, he don't know what I'm doing, man. Um, when you got the call, did, were you having pina coladas or anything like that on the beach? Or? <laughs> Funny enough, I wasn't. I was actually at breakfast in Bali um, with with the missus, beautiful, looking into the jungle, and just waiting for the field to come out, I clicked onto YouTube, and the first one that popped up was Eddie Hearns out to sign a Jack Carroll. And straight away, I started, um, I was just laughing, like smiling. She's like, what are you doing? I said, I'm going to fight Jack Catchwell. She's like, what? Did, you get, did, did they offer you to fight? I was like, nah. She's like, why? He goes, because listen to Eddie's little plan for him. Oh, we're going to have a warm up against the top 15 kind of guy, end of May. Then we're going to get him back out, look, Regis program in September time. I just knew, I, I literally knew, and I said, I'm not even going to say nothing to me, manager. Um, I'm not going to get in touch with him, because then if you're going and ask him for it, then obviously the deal's a little bit different. We'll wait for him to come, mate, nine hours later, get a text up, can you talk? <laughs> uh, I says, uh, Jack Catchell. He's like, how do you know? I says, I know these things, mate. The world works in mysterious ways. So, um, yeah, as soon as I seen that video, I knew this fight was going to happen. Uh so since the Robbie Davis Jr. fight, like, um, like after that, you must feel like, uh, I don't know, like, 
has a, has it bugged you at all the fact that he wanted the rematch and he's kind of he was kind of giving out a little bit on Twitter like has it has that in any way like uh, halted the or anything like that? Like? I I don't have a, I don't have Twitter so I didn't see. It. Yeah. Um, I got sent some of the, the stuff he was <laughs> Barry McGuigan saying they got to lodge an official complaint. Look, I was just Liam, I was coming. Yeah, I am. Um, I did, 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 what was it down? You said you got sent. Uh... Listen, I understand. I understand. He's probably sitting at home, stuck into repeats of Jeremy Coyle with a family bag of Maltesers and his snap leg up on a cushion. You know what I mean? Like, and then seeing all the the acclaim. No, I get it. You know what I mean? And it probably is hard that happening to you and then going forward so I don't hold any um, any any you but it's a bit annoying like because it's like I didn't get any credit for it fair enough if you just fell over in the ring it was because you got knocked down with a shot it's no different to if I had landed that shot on his orbital bone for example and it was okay then and then it started swelling up more in the third round and the corner of the referee stops the fight or and then, oh, great shot by Foley to smash his orbital bone. I just happened to smash his ankle with a shot. But it's the same difference, right? But then it's just like, oh, it was dead. Again, it's whatever, man. You know, I, it's, it's probably a hard time for him mentally, so. Mm. Um, but, like, at the same time when I watched it, like, um, you know, it, it obviously it wasn't nice what happened to him. Like, But I was like, do you know what, like, even though it's not great what happened to him, like if anyone's gonna get, if you're gonna say that it's the rub of the green or look or whatever, I was like, if there's anyone that deserves that at this stage, it's, it's Dara, like because, you know, you look up, look at the uh, Akeem Ennis Brown fight, you went in with your really bad bicep, um, the way that the Chris Jenkins fight ended when you were getting the better of him, like I was like, if there's anyone that hasn't been getting the run of the green over time, it's Dara, like, and if there's anyone that does deserve it now. You, you know, you're training, you're being very honest, um, you're living a clean life. As Deirdre said to me before, she says, when I lost my world titles twice, I says, I just have to keep moving the ball, pushing the ball forward, and hopefully eventually it'll go my way. And that's what obviously you've done after your losses, and it's obviously for once run in your way. So you must have felt like, you know, that a bit of luck my way, like like, like I, I deserve that kind of, you know. Well, there's, there's a lot to be said, Kieran, on the belt, playing the long game and being resilient. And not giving up, and and I always knew if I if I didn't give up, if I didn't just throw me hand in the towel, when nothing was gone right for me, injuries, no, no, nothing inside. I was injured. I was out getting me shoulder operated on. Had no manager, no promotional contract, no like, no, no, no clear path. But I just didn't give up myself, and I knew that if I never gave up on myself, then I would find myself in in these positions, which which I'm in now, you know. So, it's like <laughs> the overnight success that's been 24 years in the making, you know. But I'm finally getting me flowers now, and and um, you know it's going to continue. You know, like one one fluke win against uh, Robbie Davies Jr. You know, I'm not I'm not hanging me hat on that. There's plenty more to come mm-hmm. with me. Um, like you were saying, that it, boxing doesn't owe you anything, owe anyone anything. And it, lo- it loves no one. It does, true. Yeah, it loves. It's it's unrequented love. You love it so much, but it's never going to love you back, no matter what. Never going to love you back. Um, but I, I just had to keep plugging away, you know, ever since I teamed up with this uh, young uh, squash buckler over here, Mr. Benjamin Sava. I'm actually glad I remember to mention him because he always gets very upset when I don't. <laughs> but um, everyone's like, oh, what's behind this career resurgence? I'm on the feet since I started training with Ben. Before there was a wild man, I just used to get in and fight. I always had skills, but for some reason, I just wouldn't display them in the fight. You know, so now on the Ben, we're on the same wavelength and um, it's gelling and it's it's working, you know. I'm sick of cooking him dinners over here. Cause I thought it'd be the other way around. I know, yeah, well, the fella can't cook. <laughs> if, 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 if I'm uh, waiting on him to hand me a plate of food, then... I wouldn't have made the check weight this morning, let me tell you that. But um, yeah, I feel I feel good. You know, I feel like I'm just coming into my prime now. It's always age. Everyone's oh, 34 now. Like, has he got much left? Can he? I've got everything left. 
I had one fight in three years through COVID. I'm fresh, man. I didn't have an amateur career. Fuck all, 10, 11 fights. Mm. I'm fresh. This is when I'm really going to start coming into me on, man. Mm. Um, it's, and it seems like, since you were Ben, everything is much more calculated. Like, you know, you look at the fight against Robbie Davis Jr. I don't think people give you a lot of credit for how you're boxing it because... You waited, for, you waited, you said traps, you were setting up certain shots and you eventually obviously landed the right hand a couple of times and even the first one was absolutely lovely right down the pipe and um, it was before you wouldn't have probably had that um, that mindset going into it. So um, it must be really good for you and exciting for you because you don't know your ceiling yet. So you're waiting for you to hit that ceiling and uh, that's something that ha- happened to Paddy McGrory lately as well. He gave it a really good go, went with the Walsh and he still doesn't know what I see in there. So it must be really exciting for you since you've joined Ben. Like. Yeah, definitely. It's like you said, what, what is my scene? One sure thing is I'm going to find out because yeah. um, I never shy away from a fight. Um, when I beat Catrell, um, who's next? Yeah. Who's just, I just want to fight the best. Like, yeah. This is, like, this is um, my legacy I'm writing, you know? I don't want no easy fights. I ain't got time for that. I never had time for that. You know, it could be a different story if I would have, you know, kind of foxed my way through my career. But I never did, man. I was like a bullet train. Boom. Anyone, anyone. Does he want to fight me? <laughs> Let's get it. No, what style do you want? Does he have a good record? Is he above me on box rec? Let's go. They're the questions I used to ask. Um, now it's a little bit more calculated. Like, how much am I getting paid? <laughs> That's what happens when you have children, right? Um, nah, but... Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm looking for. I'm excited about the future. I'm excited to fight on Saturday. I love fighting. I'm, re- I'm just like I'm excited to fight. I can't wait for that belt to go. And I know everyone says this, but when people get in the ring, they don't really um, say, "Oh, I really want to fight." And just like, oh, you don't look it, man. I, I love being in there. Trust me. I can't wait just to look at him. See, okay, try one of them left hands at me. Let's see how strong you are. Hit me one of them low blows because you can't one back. I'll crack your cup. One question you won't have uh, going over there like you had last time was was a belt. Um, there is a belt on the line this time, isn't there? Yeah, I found out yesterday the WBA into continental titles on the line. So like the true professional, no problemo. Um, do I need to do a check weight? Yeah, I had to be within 3% of the check weighing and three days out or something so I'm flying tomorrow they're like oh can you do it when you land I was like you know what I'll do it a day early how about that Mr Mel Christie are you around today little check weighing um, point one of a pound on the consummate professional mate um, yeah as you said consummate prof- prof- professional after you have this fight at the weekend so it's just going to be the three weeks of drinking is it um, well I only have won the last time so I gotta, <laughs> I'm actually coming back to, to Ireland this time for a week. The last time I just went in and flew straight to Australia. Yeah, yeah. So, I might chance a couple of Guinness, you know. It's been, it's been a while, man. It's been a while and it, it don't travel to Guinness. So, what they give you down in Australia is like a, a sour variant. Yeah. Nah, no bueno. Poor Ben doesn't know what's going to happen. He's going to return home a, sh- a shell of a man. <laughs> well, he's, he's staying in England for a week to catch up with family and oh, that as okay, well. Right, so. right, right. Because he heard that you were staying home for a week. Um, possibly, yeah, possibly. Right, well, Dara, um, uh, it's been great. Um, I haven't been doing much of these lately because I myself have been busy, but uh, I had to make sure I came down and, and t- chatted to you. But, uh, yeah, thanks very much for your time again, and hopefully uh, Saturday I'll be singing your name again. 100%. You will be super, super foley. <laughs> I just want to say as well, we're here in Cherry Archer Boxing Club. They've been very hospitable. Um, as has Esco Boxing Club, as has Celtic Warriors, as has Armour Performance, everywhere, you know, it's had to fill me ballast tanks full of pride, passion and everything else to come and get this victory. Um, I know I'm going into the Lions then again, 20,000 <laughs> 20, manks, but let me tell you this, there's no better man alive to go in there with no fear and just take what's his, take what I've worked my whole career for. That's exactly what I intend on doing. Well, thanks very much, Dara. And, uh, Thank you. Yeah, thanks can't wait. Down as well. no thanks problem. for making the drive down and the book as well. I appreciate it. No problem, no problem. Thanks very much.